Good morning. It is Wednesday, June 16th. I'm just getting ready to get on an early morning flight tomorrow uh, to head up to PA to do a youth retreat. And um, it should be pretty good. I'm ready to rock and roll. This morning as I was working out, I was listening to uh, scripture, listening to the gospel according to Luke. I always listen to scripture. I read it sometimes, but I listen a lot because uh, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I will tell you that uh, as a kid, I would always listen to the radio. Always. I would even fall asleep listening to the radio. And I would wake up in the morning sometimes and I would like hear a song and I'd be singing along. I was like, man, how do I even know the words to this song? Well, I know the words to that song because it was playing probably multiple times while I was sleeping and that's how we remember things we get the word of God written in our hearts we listen to it we pray we listen to it we read it we pray we listen to it read it and it gets written in our hearts but anyhow this morning as I was exercising listening to the word um, chapter 8 was on and I felt the Lord uh, reveal some things to me that revival only happens in good soil. It's like, okay, Lord, you can either, um, you know, what do we do here? What do we either look for good soil or tend the soil? I felt you could either look for good soil or tend the soil. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, you do both. But how do you look for good soil? How do you tend the soil? What are we even tending for? Well, it's kind of crazy that the Lord would bring this up this morning. We now live in Florida here, obviously, as you guys know. And with that being said, um, we have a small area back here behind our apartment, and it is a sandy area. It's literally sand. There's probably no soil in it. And we are going to replant it. We want to put some grass in there. So what we're going to have to do is till it and till it with soil um, so that we can plant some kind of hardy grass. Um, so the soil is bad now, but we are going to tend to it to put good soil into it. So I was listening to Luke 8, and I was listening to the parable of the, so of the sower, or the parable of the soil, depending on what you read, either in Mark 4, Luke 8, what translation you read, what translation you listen to. I listen to uh, NASB. Uh, 2020 actually is what I'm reading now. It says, Now when a large crowd was coming together and those from the various cities were, were journeying to him, he spoke by way of a parable. The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell beside the road, and it was trampled underfoot. And the birds of the sky ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky soil, and when it came up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it out. And yet other seed fell into good soil, and it grew up, and it produced a crop a hundred times as much. As he said these things, he would call out, The one who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now his disciples began asking him what this parable meant. He said, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest they are told in parables, so that while seeing they may not see, and while hearing they may not understand. Now this is the parable. The seed is the word of God. And those beside the road are the ones who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart, so that they will not believe and not be saved. It says, those on the rocky soil are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and yet do not have any firm root. They believe for a while, and in a, in a time of temptation they fall away. The seed which have fell among the thorns these are the ones who have heard, and as they go on their way, are choked out by the worries and the riches and the pleasures of this life, and they bring about no fruit to maturity. But the seed in this good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word with a good heart, a good and virtuous heart, 
and hold firmly and produce fruit with perseverance. So I've heard this a million times. I've listened to it. I've had all kinds of different revelations through it that the Lord has shown me. But recently, uh, I've just been thinking about different temptations and, and how it, it comes about. And literally, I know you guys have probably heard this or heard it preached, but there are three its uh, three temptations, the temptations of Christ and temptations to us, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And as I was, obviously, as I've been listening to them, studying them, observing my own life of what is what, um, this, this parable is, is being read, and I'm like, wow, man, the three soils, the three bad soils, literally, have given way to those three temptations. The first one, uh, where they are trampled, it says that uh, beside the road, the devil comes and takes them from their heart, so they will not believe. That's, and the first one, when he reads that first soil, I'll read the two comparisons. I'll read the parable and then his explanation in each soil. It says, the sower went out to sow a seed, and as he sowed, some fell beside the road, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the sky ate it up. And then Jesus says that this is um, the one, um, yeah, those beside the road and the ones who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so they will not believe and be saved. The pride of life. Being prideful. Uh, pride in itself uh, is basically, it's the original sin, it's the sin of Satan, and it leads to all the other sins. And these prideful individuals. Um, it's so crazy. I think about when I when I've given the word of God to people, and I see it on Facebook here, some of my friends are, that's Bible stupid, there's no God, I know what's up, I'm the guy who knows the government, I'm the guy who knows how to live, I'm the farmer, I'm this and I am that, and blah, 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 pride. Pride needs broken. How do we tend a prideful, prideful soil? We call it out. Dude, you're so filled with pride, uh, you wouldn't know what hit you. We have to call out pride. We have to call out pride. I uh, heard a uh, saying a long time ago, I use it all the time. It says, pride is like bad breath. Everyone knows you have it, except for you. We have to tell people about their boogers, their bad breath, and about their pride. We have to. If you care about a person, you have to tell them about their pride. Second soil. The next soil is, others fell upon rocky soil, and when it came up, it withered away because it had no moisture. That soil says, uh, on the rocky soil are the ones who hear, they receive the word with joy, and yet do not have a firm root. They believe for a while, and in the time of temptation, they fall away. That is the... Um, pride or the um the lust of the eyes sorry the lord gave it to me i didn't write it down the lust of the eyes um yes the lust of the eyes so when they fall into these temptations they see temptations and they go right after them it's not so much the lust of the flesh but it is appealing um appealing to the things that we see, the distractions, the watch the birdie, the take your eyes off of Jesus type things. When our eyes are off Jesus, we tend to go after things that really don't matter. When Peter cut the ear off Malchus, it was the temptation to it was fear and it was the temptation to defend jesus it was a temptation to not be taken so he fell into sin um, it's the same thing as far as when jesus said uh well when jesus said to peter about his revelation he uh, uh of him peter's revelation from the lord uh, from God the Father it says from above about he was the Son of God and the Messiah and then right after that 
Peter's trying to talk him out of going to the cross. Oh, may it never be, you know, the eyes, takes his eyes off of Jesus in the mission, puts it on his own agenda, and he says, behind me, Satan. Right? That's that kind of stuff. That's that soil. Peter's had some bad soil, but Jesus worked on it. But you got to call that stuff out. Call it out. And the seed which fell among the thorns, these are the ones who have heard as they go on their way are choked out by the worries the riches and the pleasures of this life and they bring about no fruit to maturity that's the lust of the flesh going after everything the sex drugs rock and roll worrying about what you have what you don't have and all those things the lust of the flesh we need to call out these three temptations when people are being tempted uh, most people don't have the ability, ability, one, to see the temptation, two, to fight the temptation, and three, to take the temptation to Christ. Now, are we supposed to be shooting everybody's sin down? Of course not. These are all self-reflections, too. We have to look in ourselves for these three things, these three parts of our garden that don't have soil, the good soil. Of course, the good soil is somebody who's humble, somebody who is hungry for the Word of God, somebody who is anxious to receive and willing to change, somebody who is absolutely fed up with this life in this world and looking for a better life, and that life comes through Christ. But I was thinking about that this morning as I go address a group of teenagers, you know, um, Everything's so fresh to young people and to youth, and everything seems so right because the world teaches us it's so right. Now, if we watch the world, um, you know, if we go into a place, a church, or we go into an area to evangelize, and the world is over there saying, come to me, come get rich, come be gay, cut your genitals off, wear a new hat, do what you want, whatever makes you feel good, that'll make you feel better. It's like, it's like we're sowing seeds and then there's someone throwing rocks in the seeds and trampling on it. Uh, but that's the enemy. The enemy and the world has done, uh, has done what they are supposed to do. It is still under God's direction. Um, there is a battle and that battle is constantly taking place. But in the meantime, we are to tend to the soil, to look for good soil and plant. And when we find bad soil, like out back here, we need to mix in good soil. We need to uh, call it out. We need to pull the rocks out of that soil. Uh, we need to rip out the things that are gonna choke out the good grass that we plant. We are to be farmers for the most part, farmers in the kingdom, seed sowers seed sowers and ground tenders uh, being led by the owner of the of the ground which is the father god the father and the holy spirit is the one who talks to us and leads he's like the one out in the field with us talking to us and the lord jesus christ basically who is in charge of all things anyhow that's my video for the day. I got stuff to do. Just wanted to share that with you. Check out the soil. Read Luke 8. Pray about it. Check it out yourself. And then check yourself out. I'm about to go evaluate some soil and uh, see if my heart is where it needs to be to do what I need to do today. If not, I need to get in alignment. Maybe pluck out a rock or two and go from there. All right, guys. Peace out. I'll see you. Uh, You'll be getting updates from the youth retreat. All right. See you later.